Good morning, and welcome to worship at Coleman Lutheran Church. We're happy that you can be with us virtually, and we want to invite you also to worship with us in person here every Sunday at 9 a.m. I just have a couple of announcements. One concerns our ongoing series of Lenten worship services, 6.30 on Wednesdays downstairs in our fellowship hall. This week is the last midweek Lenten service already. It's crazy how quickly it's gone. Our series has focused on the seven deadly sins, and next week our sin is anger. Holy Week services will occur on both Thursday and Friday of Holy Week at 6.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary, and our celebration Easter service will be at 9 a.m. on Easter Sunday morning. We hope that you can be with us. Easter lilies are always a wonderful addition to our Easter celebration. If you would like to donate an Easter lily, please bring it to the church. And if you would like it in honor or in memory of someone, let us know and we'll be happy to put that in our Easter bulletin. I don't believe that I have any other announcements. So we will begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As darkness gives way to light and winter sleep to fresh beginnings, we come here to be reminded of God's love for us. Like the green shoots of renewed life stirring beneath the soil, we welcome an awakening of God's word in our lives. In this time of reflection and of repentance, we affirm our identity. We claim our security as children of God. We begin our confession and forgiveness in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and beloved minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear the lessons, and our first lesson today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, 
know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sin with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of the flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designed by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Holy Gospel, according to John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour hath come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good morning. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Next week is Palm Sunday already, the day Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey. 
somehow triumphant and donkey don't seem to go together, do they? It, it seems like a great leader entering triumphantly should be riding a white stallion, or perhaps, as in the Middle East, a camel, all decked out in purple and gold like we saw depicted in paintings of the wise men. Figures though, doesn't it? <laughs> We've been talking all through this series about the way God upends everything we think we know about pretty much everything, including to including and especially covenants. We discovered that covenants with God are different. Instead of being two-sided as those we might be more familiar with, God's covenants are with God's self for God's people. The first we looked at was the rainbow which God placed in the sky to remind God to never destroy the earth again with a flood. The second was the impossible birth of Isaac to aged Abraham and Sarah. And that was the beginning of God's promise to deliver all of the nations. The third was a, a little trickier to understand because at first glance, the Ten Commandments reveal only God's law. We dug deeper, though, to see how they also reveal God's power, God's truth, and God's honesty. The covenant is in the first. I am the Lord your God. In it, God promised to be God for God's people. The fourth almost seemed like God was revealing a bizarre sense of humor, though, didn't it? Requiring the terrified Israelites to look at a bronze likeness of the very thing that was killing them. We saw, however, that by forcing them to look at the bronze serpent, God was really repenting them by forcing them to face their sin and thereby to welcome God's forgiving love which alone could heal them physically and, more importantly, spiritually. In our gospel lesson, we saw how the very same thing happened as God's only son, Jesus, was lifted up on the cross and how we, seeing him there yet today, are repented as we are forced to face our sin and to receive God's forgiveness. This week's Old Testament reading moves into Jeremiah, who is considered one of the major prophets by not only Jews and Christians, but also, interestingly enough, by Muslims. Important though he was, Jeremiah wasn't very popular in his time. His doom and gloom sermons earned him the nickname, the Weeping Prophet. In the 900 years, since Moses led them to the promised land, the Israelites had fallen away again, surprise, and they were being led away, not only by a series of corrupt kings, but by equally corrupt and deceitful religious leaders. Jeremiah called the people to worship not because they had to, but because they wanted to, worship that was written in their hearts. Well, neither the priest nor the people listened, however, and in approximately 586 BCE, as Jeremiah prophesied, Jerusalem fell. Solomon's temple was destroyed, and the exile of the Judean people in Babylon began. This punishment, harsh as it was, was not the end. God had promised, after all, and in this passage, God promises again through Jeremiah. The day is surely coming, the Lord said, when people won't have to be taught about the Lord because all will know him from the least to the greatest. I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sin no more. Well, fast forward 600 years. It's now what we know as Holy Week. People from all over the nations had welcomed Jesus in Jer Jerusalem on the aforementioned donkey, laying their cloaks in front of him and waving palm branches. They lined the road, shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The disciples were riding high on waves of anticipation. 
The hour has come, Jesus tells them, for the Son of Man to be glorified. And then he keeps talking. <laughs> Talk about a downer. Those who love their lives lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father then will honor. Ah, oh, Jesus, we had them, I can hear them say. For a minute we had them, and now we're back to square one, back to talk about serving and dying. We, we get no fans from this kind of talk. It's just the kind of thing they expected from a shaggy guy riding on a donkey in the ragtag of bunch of country hicks who follow him. <laughs> we don't quite get it either sometimes, though. We, too, want the glory our way. We want the blessing our way. We even want the serving our way. We read these verses of Jesus as a prescription to achieve the glory and blessing that we think signal God's favor. Throughout the ages, Many have read this passage in the same way and have even left kith and kin to take on vows of chastity and poverty in hope of earning God's favor. Martin Luther himself originally thought this was what would please God. Against his father's wishes, young Martin became a monk and in his own words, kept the rule of my order so strictly that I may say that if ever a monk got to heaven by his monkery, it was I. If I kept on any longer, I should have killed myself with vigils, prayers, reading, and other work. Luther found no honor in his monkery, only self-condemnation. There was always more to do, more prayers to say, more repenting, more service. When it came right down to it, Luther realized that all the doing wasn't serving God at all. It was serving Martin's ambition to please God. And so it is with us. Focusing on ourselves and what we are to do puts us in the driver's seat, giving us some sort of perceived power and taking that power from God. <laughs> and that's never a good thing. No, Jesus' words here are not prescriptive, but descriptive. They don't tell us what to do. They tell us what God is doing. Look at the tense of Jesus' sentence in today's passage. While all the other covenants we've looked at have been promises for the future, Jesus is speaking here in present tense. It gives me goosebumps. The hour has come. Now is the judgment of the world Jesus continues, now the ruler of the world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up, will draw all people to myself. People of God, the hour came. He has been lifted up, and we have been drawn to him. The judgment of this world has happened, and God's mercy has prevailed. The ruler of this world has been driven out. His power to mete out eternal punishment to God's followers, to us, has been stripped from him at the cross. The kingdom of God has come, and while we don't see it yet with our eyes, while we live still sort of in the middle of the story, by faith, we know the ending. The promises have been kept. The covenants have been completed. In saying those who love their life lose it, Jesus is describing a life spent chasing the wind, as written in Ecclesiastes. A life trying to find God's blessing in yourself and in your accomplishments. If you're living this way, you've never really had life, because if you know by God's grace the joy of his kingdom, you're already there, and you're freed to stop searching and to live the abundant life God came to give you. Following Jesus isn't a have to anymore. It is just is. It's like the summer ice cream truck to a kid. 
When you got money in your hand, you run joyfully to catch it. In a few minutes, in tomorrow's service, we will be recognizing some of our members, myself included. And I think I speak for every one of us when I say we don't see a calling to serve at Coleman Lutheran as a chore, but as a gift. We are blessed to be a blessing and to be entrusted with the care of this congregation or any congregation in any way is a sign of privilege that we humbly accept. As surely as baptismal waters wet you and bread and wine of communion fed you, you can be sure that you are blood-bought sons and daughters of the covenant, of the King of kings, and of the Lord of lords, and the Father is honored. Amen. And now let us confess our faith, the faith that believes in God's promises. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You fill the earth from the tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, your justice, and your peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying, and all who grieve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and in death. Empower this congregation, Coleman Lutheran, in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in our Sunday school, confirmation and learning ministries, Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus, for there is life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves in all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, people of God, receive God's blessing. You are what God has made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace now, beloved children of God. Share the good news.